Good morning, good morning, good morning. You are listening to Contending for the Faith broadcast. This is your host, Evangelist Sabrina White. I am so excited, as usual, to be on air uh, on Facebook, on YouTube, bringing you the Word of God. Um, I just love what I do for Jesus. I love it because it is impacting people's lives, those that listen, those that view uh, the broadcast, and... um, it gives you information. So when, like me, have to come before him in the day of judgment, everyone has to. We Everyone have to go, come before the Lord. You know, and there are some things that's going to be asked of us. And you can say, yeah, I did hear that. A lot of times people do not want to hear the word or go to church or be around someone that will speak into their lives about the word is because it's going to upset their conscience of what they're doing (laughs) that's not particularly aligned up with the word. So we can't stop death. We can't stop that time before the throne of God giving inventory because inventory has been taken on us every day. (laughs) We can't, we, we, uh, we have to give an account of uh, what we've said, what we've done. It's not a bad thing if you've done the right thing. So that's the purpose of uh, me doing the broadcast, Contending for the Faith, because I know there's so many people saying, oh, you can do as much bad as you want to, and God is good, and it'll be okay. However, the scripture reads that after death is judgment, and we have to stand before him uh, in that day. Uh, uh, Jesus himself said whatever we did that was evil against him they're going to have eternal damnation and Jesus said whatever we did that was good we are going to have eternal life with him Jesus said it he wrote the script I'm just a messenger I'm, I'm happy to do what I do my heart goes out to people that are confused and they can be 80 and 90 years old and not understand truth because their mom said it, their great grandmom said it, their great granddaddy was the pastor and so forth. They just, just, just inherit, um, misunderstanding, uh, misinterpretation concerning the word of God. So this is the purpose of contend for the faith is to would debunk all the chaos and the confusion when it come down to the simple truth. The, the Bible let us know even a fool can understand the word of God. You don't have to have a master's degree. And I love education. I love education. Uh, I've educated people, very highly educated people in my family. So I love education. And that's to get you by in this world, get you the better jobs, uh, set your family up for a better future, your children. I get it. I understand it. I embrace it. However, Jesus said, even a fool can understand the word of God. He said, I make it simple. You don't have to have a theologian degree. You don't have to understand, um, you know, uh, what man make it so hard. And that's why I'm on here for to make it simple with scripture and i pray that you will enjoy it not only just enjoy it but to hear jesus he that has an ear to hear and when he say hear he expected you to obey and he expected out of me too i am not exempt he expected out of me and so me and, and everyone else so yes all right we're going to talk today about why did jesus suffer why did jesus suffer heaven therefore Brethren, boldness to enter into the holiness by the blood of Jesus, as Hebrews 10, 19 and 20, and by, uh, by a new and living way, which he hath consecrated for us through the veil. That is to say, through his flesh. Again, you listen, continue for the faith broadcast. And having said that, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Father, we come before you in the precious name of Jesus, thanking you for everything that you've done for us. We thank you for your peace. We thank you for your your love and your faithfulness. We can trust you, even a chaotic time, 
even the period of sicknesses, even the period of loneliness, even the period of want. We trust you. Yea, though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we still look to you. We will not fear no evil. We thank you for holding us up. We thank you for the blood that you've applied to our soul through the baptism in Jesus' name. And you've given us the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. What a comforter. What a mighty gift. Oh, we had no idea the Holy Ghost packed such comfort and peace and love and joy. So we appreciate you. Holy Ghost, do what you do. Bring souls in that they may taste and see that the Lord is good. Bring them in repenting. Bring them in desiring to turn from their sins and turn to Jesus in these last days. Give them a mind to turn their back on their flesh. Hallelujah. Give them a mind to repent and say, what must I do? Give them a mind to go down in Jesus' name and to be filled with the Holy Ghost and to run as never before. And that they would bring in their mom, their dad, their grandparents, that they would bring them in, that they would be witness and follow, true followers of Jesus Christ to get others in. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Do what you do. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. We're going to jump into the lesson, the gospel message. Praise the Lord, Emmanuel. <laughs> praise the Lord, first lady. That's why we thank God for those are my uh, 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 my pastor and my first lady. Praise the Lord, everyone. We thank God for all of you that are praying and uh, that souls will be hear this message and uh, be saved. And uh Okay, let's get to work here. The gospel message is that of Jesus died and shed his blood for our sins, right? Um, and he did, we can read that. We can see what the scriptures has said. He did that according to the scriptures, 1 Corinthians 15 and 3, Isaiah 53, 4 through 6. It is important to keep in mind that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. It is important to be baptized in the name of Jesus because the blood is in the name. On the night of his, on the eve of his crucifixion, he had just had his la the last supper with his disciples. He took that cup of wine. He said, this blood is for the remission of sin. This blood, you'll find it in Matthew 21. He said, this blood is for the remission, to remit sin. He, that was on the eve, like I said, on eve of his crucifixion. It's not unusual to wonder, why couldn't Jesus have simply died a quick death? An animal sacrifices was killed with a quick slice of a, of, of a sharp knife. Why did Jesus have to endure the scourging, the mocking, and that crucifixion? His suffering was that, yes, of injustice. Those that doubted him. Those that feared him. And, and, and there was time that, you know, he dealt with pain. He dealt with all that. He dealt with not only that, a degradating the, I'm sorry, degrading death. So he dealt with the injustice. He dealt with doubt. He dealt with the fear. He dealt with pain. Even his own family, his own siblings did not believe him. How hard is that? And y'all understand, you know, that when it comes from a sibling nature, uh, thankfully that uh, people are born, uh, raised in a good, healthy uh, home environment but some of us weren't or some of you weren't so you can understand how it is when people don't believe in you can you imagine that <laughs> the word passions come from so we talk about his passion his suffering and that word suffering is the root word is latin which is patty p-a-t-i and it means suffering, enduring, to endure or undergo an experience. So Christ's passion is physical suffering, uh, his enduring the thing that he endured. The passion of Christ began when he suffered. Our Lord endured for our redemption through the agony, from the agony in the garden until his death on Calvary. The death of Jesus shows humanity that God is truly human and that he is willing to undergo every human suffering. Jesus says that he was touched with the feeling of our, Paul actually said it about Jesus, that we were touched with the feeling, he's touched with the feeling of our infirmity. He was God and he was also man. 
and that humanity part of him felt the things that we go through, felt the things that we suffer on a daily basis, sometimes monthly, every now and then, you know, how things happen in our lives. Well, Jesus has been through that. He understands. So the passion of Jesus Christ means that he suffered. Before his passion, well, that 33 years, he suffered temptation, the daily struggles against sin that we endure. Uh, he experienced rejection, Hebrews 4, 15 to 18. He experienced rejection by his own hometown uh, because of their unbelief. He could not perform miracles there. Uh, there were blasphemous uh, accusations. Um, when he was doing good things, you know, sometimes you do, or you're so good and you're so kind to people and you feel like the Lord has led you to be kind and show nothing but love, but people find fault in that. And you like, take this gift, you know, this is a gift that I'm giving you. This is a gift that the Lord has sent you to give to me. Embrace it. Especially during these times, people don't have to be nice to you. They don't have have to respect you. They don't have to say a kind word. They don't have to show you joy. So embrace that because when you get it, you feel violated. You feel like, hey, do they know who I am? Or hey, they didn't have to treat me that way. But then when someone is kind to you, you turn like, you know, why are you kind? What do you want? Don't, don't do that. Well, Jesus was treated that way. And that's why I'm so glad that we can look to him as our example and we're going to get further about him being our example and he said for this is my blood of the new testament that was matthew 26 21 i mentioned earlier uh on the eve uh, concerning the cup of the lord's supper he said for this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of sins take a special note of this phrase for the remission of sin the passion the passover meal pointing to jesus christ that uh, the, the Passover meal, of course, was the evening meal uh, that they celebrated concerning the exodus from uh, from Egypt. Let's talk about what happened during that Passion. The elements of the Passion story are the Last Supper, the agony in the garden, and uh, the arrest of Jesus Christ, and after the betrayal by uh, by Judas, the uh, examination and the condemnation of Jesus by the Jews. The trial before Pontius Pilate, uh, during which Jesus is sentenced to be whipped and crucified. And we talk about how it finished, how he finished everything on the cross. Even in the Garden of Gethsemane, uh, as he agony in prayer, there his lazy disciples could not even watch with him. Um, there they followed uh, the betrayal, and uh, you see that in Mark, the 14th chapter and the 43rd verse, how he was betrayed by Jesus was a kiss. He was forsaken by everyone. Peter denied him. They spit in his face. He was blindfolded. Uh, some of the council beat him. The officers struck them with the palm of their hand. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe. All of these things he suffered for you and I. So they mocked him even further. They stripped him of his robe and they put on him his, uh, a crown of thorns. And a great f a crowd followed, including men and women. Um, <clears throat> a lot of them mourned and, uh, and, and cried over what was going on. But some was happy, you know, because they felt like uh, he had blasphemed, and, uh, saying that he was God and that he could heal and you raise his temple up destroy his temple and in three days raise it up. So all of these things included the passion. God needed a perfect and willing obedient sacrifice to atone for man's sin. So God needed a perfect sacrifice for our sins. He lived, a, Jesus lived a perfect life without sin. And this is how he pleased the father by the things that he went through for us to bring us to God. Jesus instituted a new and living way. I love that scripture, Hebrews 10 and 20. A new and living way through the veil of his flesh, through the blood. Remember I said, Matthew 26, 21, the blood. When we are baptized in the name of Jesus, Paul said in uh, Galatians 3, 27, when we are baptized into Christ, you put on Christ. Because some of you might say, well, how do I get in Christ? How do I get into this new and living way? 
You know, it's not Baptist and Methodist or Pentecostal or whatever you call yourself on your marquee. No, it's the new and living way, the new birth, the gospel, the new life. Hallelujah. The new and living way. Uh, his veil, he, uh, the blood that was shed for your sins. Uh, Jesus suffered, revealed t uh, the terribleness of man's heart, what's in us, that universal sin. The world is born in sin, Romans 3, 23. And the consequences, the wages of sin is death, Romans 6, uh, uh, 23. So suffering reveals the greatness of God's love. Hallelujah. The power of Jesus' resurrection, the power of justification, the power of his redeeming blood, the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ by faith in him, raw salvation when you go down in his name and be filled with the Holy Ghost. He became our high priest. Jesus is a compassionate high priest. He has compassion for the ignorant. He has compassion for those that is, is stumbling in darkness. He has compassion with our infirmities, meaning he suffered being tempted, which make him able to secure them that are tempted. Hebrews 2, 18. Jesus aid those who are tempted. Jesus sympathizes with our weaknesses. Jesus appreciates the challenge of obedience in our flesh when we are denying our flesh to obey him. He appreciates that. Jesus provides mercy and grace in the time of need, Romans 8, 34. Jesus provides strength to conquer during our trials. He will be there with us to help us to conquer us, conquer them. Greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world of darkness, in the world of sin. Jesus, the perfect high priest in our intercessor to be our example when we are mistreated for doing good, how we should trust in God and to judge rightly. Jesus preserves us in our battles. Jesus is there for us. So in conclusion, perhaps we can say, Lord, thank you. We should say, thank you, Father. We can appreciate more fully how he's, why he suffered, why he paid the terrible price of sin. Yes, to be our advocate, to help those are struggling against sin, help those are in gross darkness in sin, to motivate us to reach a higher plane and striving by dying daily to be more like him in suffering, to be more like him in love, to be more like him in joy, in holiness, in sanctification, in peace, and to become the righteousness of Jesus, to become in the image of, of Jesus. Yes, Jesus' suffering forever serves as an inspiration for those who will live godly. His suffering is for those who have yet to obey the gospel, Acts 2.38. We have to obey the gospel, but we have to have faith in what he did and understand his suffering was because to redeem us from sin. You have to go down in Jesus' name. All that you have Adam's sin on you. You might say, Serena, I'm a good person. Well, being good, you have to have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And I'm not here to take anything from you, but I do want to add what you have to have, you have to have the righteousness of Jesus. You have to have the Holy Ghost. You can't live holy without the Holy Ghost. You can live moral. Yeah, you can live moral because God gave us a conscience. But you have to be in his, you have to be transformed in his image and in his likeness. And that's only through the water way. That way that I told you about earlier, that new and living way, that was through his veil that he did for us through that blood. That's how you get it, through the blood of Jesus. How? Through that, that water become a liquid, spiritual uh, a pool of blood. It's going to wash your con And then it, God going to give you a new conscious, a new conscious, a great conscious. You'll see the light. You'll see things and understand things that you never knew before. I'm telling you what the scripture is saying. That new birth. Being born of the water and spirit, it is powerful.
powerful, but you won't know it until you do it. You'll be like those in Samaritan, the Samaritan woman said, come see a man. But when they came and heard him for themselves, he said, now we know I, that's your testimony, White, but now I know. And I'm so glad that I took a heed and I listened to the broadcast and I went down in Jesus name for the remission of my sin. Call the number. Call 501-612-0271 for salvation today. You've been listening to Contend for the Broadcast. Faith Broadcast has been your host, Evangelist Sabrina White.